Thanks for watching The Personal History of Games. I'm your host, Eric Canius. Back in September of 2019, I was lucky enough to record a few episodes of the show during PAX West. Today's guest is the one and only Danny O'Dwyer. Founder of the fantastic video game documentary producing No Clip, Danny spends a lot of his time listening to other people talk about their games, so I was more than excited to hear his personal story of games as we played FIFA 19. Here's that conversation. Hello everyone and welcome to The Personal History of Games. We're here with another edition and today I'm joined by none other then Danny O'Dwyer, we'll get this guy to stop talking. <laughs> Hi, Danny. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming out. Of course. What game have we got here? We are playing uh, FIFA 19, the 19th FIFA game. Personal favorite of mine. I've been playing football games or soccer games, depending on what side of the Atlantic <laughs> uh, you grew up on. Pretty much all my life. And, and yeah, I, I have always played at least one a year. Usually both. They usually play the Pro F games as well. I was going to say, were, do you wanna, did you agree with everyone else saying Pro Evo was better? It, it was for a couple of years. FIFA is definitely like the better of the of the two now. I'd actually, I don't even know if that's fair. Pro, the, the latest Pro Evs are really good. But there was a couple of years there between like Pez, I want to say four and six, seven maybe, that were where, where Pez was miles ahead of FIFA. And then FIFA, I think FIFA 09 was the one where they kind of started turning it around. And uh, yeah, they got a bunch of uh, dudes who worked on Football Manager and a couple of other games to come over, and they totally changed it up, and it's been pretty great since. So, what was I guess what was the difference between Pro Evo and FIFA? I never really noticed. Yeah, it's the control is the nuance. Exactly, it's like talking about the difference between FIFA and Pro <laughs> is is almost the same as like talking about the difference between like the Premier League and La Liga. You know what I mean? Like, essentially, they're the same sport. It's the same game. But in if you if you have been like following one or the other, you can you feel the differences immediately. Right. Uh, Pez was uh, was harder, sort of, just across the board. Um, I think scoring goals in Pez was harder. Um, FIFA was kind of a little bit more of a I don't want to say casual play, but it was it was more action packed version of it. Like an arcadey version. Yeah, and Pez kind of felt a. Uh, I wouldn't go so far as to say it was simmy. It wasn't that. It was. It was definitely a nuance to it, but right. it was uh, it was definitely I, when you scored a goal in Pez, you really f felt like you earned it. <laughs> Whereas in FIFA, it was a uh, kind of could it could feel that way, but kind of they came a little bit easier, maybe. Okay. Uh, well, we're starting with FIFA 19. Threw me for a curveball when setting this up. That's all right. <laughs> what I like to do is try and find um, or like look at the through line. So we're in the third floor of the Westin in Seattle, <laughs> Washington, playing FIFA. And it's, how did we get here? What is, what's your first significant memory of playing games? Uh, I guess it was another uh, football game, which is kind of why I, I, I chose this as well. Um, I grew up playing the Amiga. Uh, Amiga 600 was the first computer we had. And the game that sort of took over me and my brother's life was uh, Sensible Soccer, which also throws shade on the idea that English people don't use the word soccer because it was an <laughs> English-developed yeah, soccer game. Certainly the next generation of English kids didn't like it when Americans started saying soccer. I think they stopped using the word, but it was a pretty common word for football, especially in Ireland where we had a different type of football. You know, right. so we Gaelic football was our football. But yeah, Sensible Soccer was the best. It was top-down, it was super hard to play. Oh, I'd say it was super hard to play. Me and my brother used to play it non-stop. And there was like six years between me and my brother growing up, which is like, there's not that much common ground, especially between boys who are kind of, I don't know, be like very adversarial, brothers can be. Yep. I'm sure sisters <laughs> can be too, but my sister was a sweetheart. My brother and me, there was a lot of friction there, I think. He also supported, he supported Man United and I support Arsenal, so there was there was that. Oh. Sensible Soccer was our like, uh, was our common ground. It was, uh, you know, he'd usually beat me, and, and years later I would beat him. Is he older or younger? He's older. Okay. He's uh, yeah, he's six years older than me, so he's okay. turning 40 this year. Yeah, so it was like, it was just kind of, he had a love of sport. He always has. He's, he works in sports broadcasting now. I work in video games broadcasting <laughs> in a weird way or video game video. Yeah, it was kind of our thing. And it's always, it's continued to be. Like if I go home to Ireland, we'll, you know, crack open the latest FIFA and, and give it a go. So it's always, yeah, for me at least, soccer games have always been big part of uh, the video gaming landscape for me, even if they hardly ever come up in my work. Cool. You're pretty good. I, thank you. I didn't know if you were taking it easy or me. Ah, <laughs> not really, to be honest. I played soccer growing up as a kid. I understand the rules. I, I was very good at defense, and that's awesome. what I've been doing yes. this entire fucking time. 
Just trying to get the damn ball away from you. Uh, were video games big in your household other than the soccer ones, or was it just like that was the thing that you played? Yeah, we played pretty much everything. The the My parents certainly weren't. Like, my parents' generation was... Uh, Ireland's had a lot of, like, societal change in a pretty short period of time, so, mm. like, technology generally wasn't a thing my parents had in their lives until sort of Ireland's economy exploded in the 80s or in the 90s so they would have had no experience of of this very you know limited experience in television even yeah not for them but certainly for me and my siblings they when we got the Amiga 600 it was like the gift between all three of us kind of thing okay and my sister was way into uh formula one games um which was cool and kind of gave me a passion for it i i do a formula one podcast now um years later but she loved there was a jeff cram and f1 she used to play on that yeah we played kind of all types of games the great thing about the Amiga was that you could just copy discs on it. It had like a workbench on the console where you could just put in a disc. So if you just had a, someone else's game, you just put it in, it would copy it to RAM. You put in a disc, it would copy the disc, no problem. So the copy protection they have were like really weird things, like you had to pick out like the third word and the fifth right. page of the manual, yes. all that sort of stuff. And then people just copied manuals, <laughs> which is probably why Commodore's not around anymore. <laughs> a big part of it. Um, yeah, so... Uh, it meant that you got access to loads of games. Like, you may mm -hmm. go over to your friend's house and they give you a whole box of discs. So there's a little yeah. community and passing games around? Totally. All that sort of stuff. My brother would go to his friends, his sister would go to her friends, I go to mine, we'd all get loads of discs. And then my brother and sister kind of, they went off to college and I was kind of left on my own by the time <laughs> I was like 12 or whatever. And that's when my real love of games kind of came into my own. Like, they, my sister doesn't really play games anymore. She plays like her phone games or whatever. My brother doesn't really have time, he's got two kids. Oh, shoot you're gonna! Oh my God! Oh my score! That was oh. the best chance of the game. Oh, you might have hit the chip button instead of the shoot button. Uh, That's a common I problem. Remember what the shoot button was? I'm it pretty happens sure I do, all but. the time. <laughs> God damn it! So close. That was real close. Yeah, that was the best. That was the best chance of the game. <laughs> so some of the, some of the controls are weird on this. I've got like a. Usually I hit down to set my. Yeah, there we go. Defensive tactics. How do I set my aggression? <laughs> Oh my god, that's some that's a mouthful. You just play every character. That's how you set the play every <laughs> right. character, every person on the pitch. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, after that it was like Mega Drive, PlayStation, all that sort of stuff. Right. Usually stuff I had to buy myself because my parents didn't like me playing all that many video games. We weren't allowed to play games during the week. Ah. It was a weekend only thing. Was it like that for any other media? Was it no TV? No, it wasn't. It was that's the I, I found it really unfair, especially because I think most TV is like brainless trash, and at least games you had to kind of do something. Yeah. Um no. Oh, yeah. good tackle! You're good. <laughs> yeah, they'd they'd be doing all that stuff, and we we couldn't play games, which kind of sucked. But yeah. sometimes I had a friend over; she'd be like, "Okay, you can play for an hour or whatever." But I mean, I don't know if she saw that I was way into games, or if her doing that made me more into games. But right. it it's is kind of funny that have, the whole... I wanted the whole pie. <laughs> she wouldn't let me. Now I'm a pie salesman. <laughs> <laughs> they always want to kept away from you, and now that's all you do. This is a classic game of football, nil all. <laughs> Half time. Yeah. I'm gonna score a corner here, right? Oh god, not corners. Uh, <laughs> Mo Salah. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Oh, oh god, I thought I was gonna. The interface is in the way, so I couldn't see which yeah, one. Yeah, I need the... to turn that off. I don't know what the deal is with that. Oh. I turned Ooh. off trainer level to zero. All right, I gotta do some mm. formation changes here. It's not. This happening. is the first full game. This this uh, install will see, but right. it keeps asking me if I want to do the difficulty thing. Whew, those numbers. <laughs> it's a lot of uh, a lot of data. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some uh, jiggery right. pokery here. Change up my ridiculous uh, formation. Is it easy to follow football while you're in the states? And it's well, as somebody who has lived on the east coast for two years. I previously lived on the West Coast, and now I'm moving back to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier on the East Coast. The West Coast is like a, you gotta wake up at six in the morning oh. to watch the Premier League games. And to be honest, I'm kind of like, I'm turned off regular football, like Premier League a little bit. Like it's so much of it is journeymen jumping from team to team, and like there's a lot of money and all that sort of stuff. So I'm not like- Am I supposed to do something? <laughs> I'm not as into it. I think it's just hit B or- Attacking. What's going on my player? Why, why am I, here we go. Mohammed's You're choking, that's what. Can't handle yeah, heat. I, I can't. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> Even Mo Salah's not scoring from there. Mm. So I think I was on the GameSpot forums the same time you were. Oh, really? I remember seeing something about Citizen Game. <laughs> Back in the and, day, and the Citizen poking Game. Around. What was that about? Yeah, Citizen Game was the tragically titled um, independent <laughs> video game no! site that I ran. There we go. Uh, Here's the goal. Uh, uh, boo. <laughs> 
It was basically like I was on the, the GameSpot forums and I don't know, wanted to work in games and didn't really know how to do that. And I thought a good idea would be like a bunch of people on the forums were kind of either wanting to do video reviews or video game writing or news or whatever. So we just set up a site that basically was like, look, this will be like a resume. You know what I mean? Like we'll all just pool our resources and we'd people on podcasts and we'd news writers and it didn't get all that much traffic, but it kind of acted as a like a repository so that when you like applied for jobs, there was like all this work. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think any of us really thought it would, like, work out. I mean, you know, years and years later, like, took a lot more than that kind of to break in. Like, I had to move to England and do all this other stuff. But, yeah, a bunch of us have ended up getting work there. And in fact, like, Tamar Hussein, who was my buddy, whose name was, like, Orochumara Sama on, uh, on the GameSpot forums. He, uh, he just moved to Oakland as well. Um, Cool. Uh, I met him. He was he was one of the guys who wrote first. And when I moved to London, he just so happened to be, like, one tube stop away from where I lived. It was cool. He was, like, a... We couldn't be more different. He was like, I'm an Irish born Catholic and he was a, a Pakistani born Muslim. And we used to sort of joke that we were the, uh, it used to be my folks who were planting bombs in London and everyone was scared of and we passed the, uh, the torch over to his. So yeah, so we had like a, uh, he was, we, we were like, it couldn't be more different chalk and cheese, but like uh, similar in, in, you know, our sort of cultural outlooks, I feel like. So we got on like a house on fire and, and ran the podcast for years. And he ended up getting a job in the industry way before I did. He worked at CVG, Computer and Video Games, a very popular magazine in the UK. Yeah, Tomorrow's a War Course, absolute legend. And uh, yeah, it's crazy because I'm moving back to Oakland and now he's my neighbor again. It's really <laughs> surreal. It's a cool, small world. Yeah, totally. Like, Super yeah, small. Yeah, the weird coincidences that. Yeah. Just keep coming up. So how old were you when you started the... The Citizen Game stuff? Yeah. God, what was I? I was in college, so it must have been like... Was I in college or was it a little bit earlier? I'd say I was like 19 or something, 18. I think maybe it, was, maybe it was just when I was in college. Yeah, it was fun. And it was like, it was a lot of like, you had to do like a bunch of jobs. So like you had to learn like video editing or like podcast production and like the same thing everyone's doing now and yes. people have done before it. It wasn't that out there and it's harder to people ask about like get breaking in doing all that sort of stuff now i think it's like i didn't know at the time i thought i thought i was like real late to the party because i was like 26 right. before i got my first job in games and like there was people like greg miller and you know who'd worked since they were like 20 or something you know it was like i was yeah. i was and I, I had a, i felt like i had a ticking clock or something but i feel like it's so much harder now with just the youtube space and like this whole everyone wants to be an influencer kind of thing because because there is so much of a overlap between that and games coverage like yeah you know they're different but they're, they're kind of similar i don't know if one can exist without encroaching on the other space yeah totally there's like a Venn in the Venn di diagram there's a lot of like intersection going on there yeah yeah it's a it's a funny old thing and i guess it was a long time ago now i guess everyone has a, i still have that sort of mentality that I'm you know because I'm independent again so it just feels like you're kind of out there on your own but yeah it was it was fun I think what I learned from doing that more than editing was like it was fun and I enjoyed doing that it wasn't just like a means to an end and I think that's really important that like unless you're doing this unless the stuff is like actually like enjoyable you won't make the, the best version of the work and like and also like it can't just be to the end because if it's just to the end oh Fuck. you scored a known goal what I didn't, what did, did you <laughs> that looked like <laughs> I think you did, did it? Or he, like I mean, he's celebrating. <laughs> so I can't tell. That looked like my guy headbutted that into the net, and I didn't know what was happening. Did you hit, yeah. I didn't hit a button. Why is he celebrating? <laughs> he's just trying to own it. Because they're mean. Look at the sweat, well, yeah. sweat yeah. physics in this game. <laughs> we got to watch this replay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my guy kicked whoa. it. Sorry. Whoa. Sorry. Just, I know. I saw the same thing. Well, we, we're, we're both happy with yeah, that. He, his head was right in the bottom yeah, of that foot. Yeah, kicked him in the head. Look at the granite Zaka's sweat. That's ridiculous. It's a lot. Yeah, it's too much. It's disgusting. <laughs> Ban it. So was there something specific in why you wanted to cover games and not just play them? Yeah, I think I thought games were like misunderstood. And this probably goes back to the whole like trying to get my parents to let me play video games during the week thing. And like where I watch television. I thought that like just it irritated me that people thought that they were these like kiddie things. And this was all like during, you know, the Mortal Kombat stuff and like games are banned this sick filth and like games are ruining kids. I mean, I guess, I guess maybe it never went away, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, so I think it was kind of hard of me was like kind of interested in that aspect. Or like I remember like talking to my parents about games, trying to justify it to them. So yeah. my, my, the first like gig I had, I guess, was I, I worked in local radio and 
stuff and I started doing like little news pieces when I was like a teenager like 15, 16 about like what was going on in games in you know, like regional radio like local radio station thing and then I started doing it in like when I was 18, 19 on like the national radio show like the sort of main current events show at drive time I'd be on with like a lady from a, you know Mothers Against Drink Driving about Grand Theft Auto 4 allowing you to drink drive you know so you had to it wasn't just like screaming at people it was like having debates on adult radio so I was kind of wow, into the whole <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm pressing buttons. I'm always oh. holding right trigger because it boosts. No! <laughs> oh, over the bar. Terrible. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. I think I just like, I got interested in the little bit of the depth just underneath the surface of games and kind of slowly but surely focused on it a bit more. But yeah, I think that's what it was. Just it was like fun to talk to people about games. Change people's opinions on games is really interesting to me. Yeah. If it's something you care about, it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Well, and since it is a positive thing for so many people, it's good down. to fix that public opinion. Yeah, and it feels like le it's less required now. It feels like everyone's kind of doing, or not everyone's doing it, but like it feels like there's a much deeper understanding of the positive effects yeah. that games have or can have. They can also have negative effects. Like, I'm, I certainly don't think that there are, you know, like anything you can. No, what was that? That was a chip, baby. <laughs> what the fuck? Come on. Mesut Ozil, look at that leg. Look at that leg. Kiss that leg. I think he scored with the other leg, actually, so that's kind of stupid. What? That was bullshit. Soccer ball can't do that. <laughs> this let's go straight in. Boink. Uh, audacious. Keeper, do something. The audacity. 19 minute. That's a real 19 minute shot. <laughs> it's not that one sided. Yeah, I mean, like, everything in moderation or whatever, but, like, it's cool that the various positive aspects of games are kind of on the tip of people's tongue now. It's not just some weird, it's not something you read about in a magazine and go, oh, it's like everyone everyone knows. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's still those articles with uh, Fortnite and the guy win $3 million and people go, whoa, and then yeah. they pull their kids out of school. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that's exactly. And then you've got, there'll always be, like, people on the fringes. Yes, or, there's always edge cases. Totally, yeah. Do you want to do same teams or different teams? Uh, it won't matter to me. All right, if let's, you... <laughs> let's do let's do same teams one more time. All right. I think I can uh, come back. Oops. That was good. That was good. Sorry, I had a bit of a, a halftime frenzy yeah, there. Had a rousing speech in the pictures. locker room. Exactly. And... This friendly game that we can't <laughs> lose. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll be a little bit easier on this one. Hey. Don't be so. <laughs> no. I was holding my own for a while. It was tiring being constantly on defense. <laughs> yeah. Should I not constantly hold sprint? Eh, no, you can. They get tired by the end of the game, but yeah, generally I, I, I tend to if I'm running, if I'm running on my own. Um, but to what you're saying about, uh, yeah, the public opinion is... Mm, okay, good. <laughs> that would have been a good start. <laughs> uh, what you're saying about public opinion changing now, like, yeah, there's less of needing to explain, like, this is what a video game is. Right. I kind of feel like, I mean, this is how I see it a little bit, How you do, what you're doing with Noclip and just getting more into the weeds of development. And like, that's still something that's still behind the curtain and not a lot of uh, right. public knowledge of... Yeah, I think it's like a layered thing. I think like, like the stuff that people know about games today is way more than it was five or ten years ago. Yes. And the stuff that people knew five or ten years ago was way more than it was 20 years ago. And I think we're just like, as a culture of game players, we're just peeling layers of the onion yeah. deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and I think a lot of that comes with like maturity and age. Like some of us have been playing games for, I mean, you know, we've been playing games for whatever, 20 years, maybe 25 years. You know, there are people older than us who've been playing games for much longer. And the sort of modern games we have now, we didn't have that generational gap. Because games changed fundamentally numerous times in the 90s and <laughs> yes. 80s and 70s. Whereas the language of games and the genres and stuff, the established sort of parlance of it has kind of been pretty consistent for the past like 20 years so it's retained players like people right. are still playing games because they're, they're the same games they played when they were kids so yeah i think it, i think it's just like the, the next layer and i think as you know more people get into programming just generally be it games or otherwise or people are more used to using like systems and interacting with interfaces digitally and they've played games their whole lives like it's just as a culture we'll understand games more by for free i think so yeah, Noclip is kind of just, I don't know, we, we can go deep because people are able to go deep. 
Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't see it as some people say like, oh, you're like really teaching people about like how games are made. And I think actually the opposite's the case. I think people who are into games are more interested in how games are made. And we're just kind of like a funnel for that. And so are so many other people, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why YouTube op-eds are so popular about design and right. all that stuff. And it's, I think it's just like, and the way reviews had to change. Like reviews aren't popular anymore because people know what game they want to buy. They want to talk about it in more interesting ways, I think. Yeah. Like for me personally, I... Definitely don't look at reviews. I mean, getting a general idea of the number is helpful. Just getting opinions from, just from people, but like watching a quick look or whatever, right? Seeing how people talk about it. Ooh. Shit. Penalty. Oh, sugar. Socrates, come on! <laughs> You're supposed to be wiser than that. <laughs> it's quite the name. They're all fighting over there. <laughs> Not so happy now, are you? Man, animations this game are real good. It's pretty good. Uh oh. Oh, he's yeah. off. Yeah. Oh, that's. Damn I'll it. take that as a victory. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to give you one piece of advice about the penalties. Uh -huh. Don't hit it hard. Okay. Even if you tap it, if the goalie goes the wrong way, right. it's gonna go in. Yeah, right. And you can so easily overkick these balls. Yes. And that most, much I remember. Most Salah's really good. So. Which button? Circle. Okay, here you got it. Yeah, circles shoot for you. So like, watch the power thing. And, oh, yeah. Just be careful. Don't tap it too hard. Trust me. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, get in I can't there. believe it shows where you're going to put that. Yeah, I didn't know you were controlling the guy. I was like, this computer's going to get it. That was weird. I actually went higher than that, but he jumped lower, so I got away with that. But I also have one less player now, so. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Hey folks, if you're enjoying this podcast, Bean to Media has another new podcast I think you'll love. It's called Do We Like, and I co-host it along with my partner Robin. Robin, do you want to explain the show? Thanks, Eric. Hi, I'm Robin, co-host of Do We Like, a podcast where Eric and I debate common people, places, and things to decide if we like them or need to leave them. Join us each week as we debate controversial topics like pickles, underwear, bubble tea, and Queen Elizabeth the First. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts or come find us at dewelike.com. Yeah, you were saying you, like reviews are kind of like uh, superfluous a little bit. Yeah, and just like seeing people play games and how it plays is way more valuable since we were able to with YouTube and all those videos. Yeah. We don't have to like look at screenshots on magazines anymore yes. and like squint or whatever. That's how I thought Driver 2 was the same as GTA 3. <laughs> I just played Driver Wait 2 for my, for my YouTube channel. I can't get out of the car. <laughs> no, Driver 2, you could get oh, out of the could. car. Oh, you could. Sorry, yeah, Driver 1, you could. I think it was the other way where Driver 2 came out and then GTA 3 was in the magazine. And I went, whoa, that looks like Driver 2. Oh, that's right. I'm interested. <laughs> so I played a lot of Driver 2. But yeah, it is good to see that game actually go. Go! Ugh. Weak ass shots. Oh god. I guess games are your your main media. What's your relationship with other media, like movies and music and stuff? Oh well, I love movies. I mean, everyone loves movies. I love it when people say, "Man, I love music." And you're like, "Yeah, well, fucking guess what? So does everyone, pretty much." Yeah, I mean, yeah, take it. You're gonna, you're gonna win by attrition by getting all my players sent off. I'm not doing anything. I'm just here. I'm just standing here. I'm a pretty passionate music fan. I I never was able to play anything, but I, I like like lots of different types of music. I worked in musical theater for uh, a couple of years and I performed a bit and most of my music is like, I grew up, my brother was a big influence on me with like dance music in the late 90s and oddies and I'm way into my rock and enjoying at the moment. The smorgasbord of good albums this week I have on rotation. I drove up from Oakland all the way up to Seattle here and uh, it was a lot of uh, Slipknot, Taylor Swift and Tool who all released <laughs> new albums recently, so. The triple threat that everyone refers to. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't know, I've always that. And then obviously, like, films. I don't see myself as, like, I don't really... Like, I, I, I'm not, like, a film student. I didn't do film in college or anything. And I watched films with, like, the same sort of magical wonder that I do with games where I don't really understand how they work. Mechanically, I can, I kind of, I know a lot about how films are made, but I, I, mm -hmm. I, I it's nowhere near comfortable to me. It's a, it's a totally different muscle. Documentary stuff that we do is very like uh, rudimentary in terms of like storytelling and production and stuff like that. But I, I'm a, a fan, obviously, of you know cinema, all mm -hmm. over the shop. So, we watch a lot of movies at home, as we all, everyone does now. The generation Netflix, we're all watching movies all the time. But <laughs> you coining uh, that or <laughs> generation Netflix? Yeah, it's my new uh, rest WWE team. <laughs> Xbox is coming back. <laughs> 
It's kind of a big Amazon Prime Can't really make an chest. N with his arms, though. <laughs> He's really trying. <laughs> awesome. Do you like hosting stuff? Um, Do you like being in front of people or like in like doing the podcast hosting or the um, the documentary hosting and the? Like to be completely honest, not real. Like I don't not like doing it, but I don't. Uh, I, I I've done it out of necessity. Like, uh, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Go on. Oh, right. Um, I like talking to people. Uh, there's a reason, like, I'm not on video in the docs. I don't think my opinion necessarily matters. And also, like, with the doc stuff, my, like, creative, like, the satisfaction I get from it is in making the thing. I don't feel like I, I need any satisfaction in, in like, being on camera or, or anything like that. Like, we, we kind of tell other people's stories, and I try and be as light a touch in them as, as possible. Right. I really like talking to people, and I really like doing the interviews and going to studios and chatting to them. I like doing the podcast for that reason, or I like doing interviews, and I like hosting stuff. Or I like, for instance, I like I like going to today. We have a we have a table at Pax, and I like that because I get to like chat to people. Yeah, like I think everyone has a certain amount of ego, and I certainly have ego in the work that I do, but I don't have ego of me being on camera or anything like that. Go. So oh. <laughs> do something. Go, oh, God damn it! Overthought it. <laughs> So yeah, I like doing it, but I've never been one to do like hosting gigs or something. You know what I mean? Like right, it's not, yes. I don't really get much from it in and of itself. Okay. I kind of like would prefer to, like editing is the part I like the most, Ugh. which says a lot because you're just like <laughs> stuck on your own for a weeks. You know what I mean? Like, yes, that does doing say nothing. a lot. It's, like, <laughs> it's funny. It's like a, the stuff, the way all that stuff works is so, I don't know. You don't really understand what part of it you love until you've done like a hundred hours of all of them, you know? Yeah, that's why I was curious and trying to get a handle on, on my own shit and what I like. Because right. <laughs> I do like being on stage and I do like hosting, mm. but it's not common, so I'm like... Right. I'm just like, what? who... Uh, is this okay? <laughs> is this normal? Is this okay? It's, but, yeah, I, I think, I, I, like, it's interesting, right? Because I think I enjoy doing it more at the start, maybe, or I, I think there's a utility from it. Like, if you're if you're hosting, you're getting your name out there and you're getting more notoriety, and ultimately in this line of work, that's the thing that, like, you know, no clip as an idea, who knows how it would have done if I didn't work at GameSpot for years, you know right. what I mean? Or if I wasn't on Giant Bomb, or like, like, I don't think Danny, the web developer in London who starts that thing up, is getting 30 people to sign up to it. So, like, ultimately, the exposure you get from that stuff, oh, great kick, wow. Uh, that was a great touch. Um, that stuff ball. matters a lot. So I think I enjoyed doing hosting in a way because it kind of helped me fund the other stuff or something right. or gave me an, a bit of exposure or whatever. But yeah, what do you think of the editing or what, what's your like, what's the part you enjoy the least? I don't know. That's why I'm still like, there are parts of editing that I really like. I like the first draft. That's fun. Right. You see it put together and like happen. Oh, that was a week. Come on. I think you overhit that one actually. <laughs> Um, like, yeah, editing the first draft is great. I mean, I think the first, I like the first draft of everything I do. God, I hate the first draft. Um, I find it the I, hardest one to do. <laughs> uh, even with writing, because I do like short films and, and other sort of right. things like that. The first draft is fun because you get to see it from start to finish right. for the first time. After that, you're doing a bunch of little stuff. Yeah. And that I'm not good at, or I, I don't enjoy. The finery. Yeah, and just trying to figure out what the other decision is, because like first drafts are all the first decision. Right. Like, yeah. okay, how does this go? Go from here to here to here. Like, cool. It's like, okay, if I change this one thing though, then I have to change all these other things. Right. And then I guess I just see the work ahead, which is not my favorite. Yeah. Like if you mess with it, you're creating work for yourself or creating yeah. problems for yourself. Yeah, I guess so. But with writing, especially, whenever I do do it, like a page one rewrite, it's always world's better. Get out of there! Ooh. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to get to this subject. Yeah. Uh, with your Switch there, I have brothers who just had kids and right. they love their Switch. Yes. Does this relate? Uh, how old are, are your brother's kids? My one brother just had a kid a month ago. Okay. And then my other brother, his daughter is five now. Wow. Yeah, I think what I've learned so far, my, my child is uh, uh, 13 months old. What I've learned so far is that it's like a different kid at like, you know, at like each little, just when you've mastered this version of the child, they get like a patch and then suddenly they're able to do all this other shit and you're like, oh my God, none of the old tricks work. So at the start, I was... Man, you, I got—I played so many games for the first like two months of her. I played more oh, yeah. games. I took two months paternity leave, and and Jeremy, uh, our camera op and DOP, went off and made some docs for NoClip. And then I—I I spent a lot of time. I finally got to play Bloodborne. I played like 
200 hours of Bloodborne. I got like a Bloodborne tattoo on the inside of my arm where she used to fall asleep on my chest <laughs> as like a sign of like, or my memory of that whole period where she was just like every night sleeping on my chest and mm. I was playing Bloodborne and I couldn't move because she'd wake up. So I just had to play this hard ass video game. Offside, offside. <laughs> oh, good save. Yeah, so now it's like we try and not have any screens around her at all, really. Okay. Just at the moment while she's like so young. So I try, we, we don't like, I don't like play games in around her very often at all. Also, my work is in the basement because I work at home. So it's pretty easy to just keep all the games down there and just do right. gaming down there. So she's like never seen me play games really. <laughs> she doesn't know how skillful you are. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She doesn't know my amazing chipping techniques, my terrible tackling <laughs> techniques. Get me sent off. But my Switch is awesome for my, for plane rides. That's the, that's right. the, and I fly, fly a lot. So FIFA actually, weirdly enough as well, is my like, my turbulence game. So if I'm a little bit freaked out, like I'm a pretty decent flyer. I'm, flyer. I'm like a little bit nervy sometimes. I try not to be, but if I'm scared, I put FIFA on easy and I play Tottenham and I try and score as many goals as possible because Tottenham is like Arsenal's biggest enemy. Uh, rival, I should say, <laughs> enemy. <laughs> you don't want to murder them or anything. <laughs> Uh, so that yeah, is, that's my that's like my 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 happy <laughs> place. A very, I don't want to say cute in a demeaning way. Cute is a, I can use cute in a good way. <laughs> like good power fantasy. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like oh, <laughs> we're scoring all these goals, and we're gonna be so well. <laughs> I know. It's like it's uh, yeah. It's like just <laughs> I don't know. Happy place. Happy place. I think it, it. I think it's like a disassociative thing. I think it like. It's the fastest way to get me out of because I don't have to think when I play FIFA. I've been playing right. these games my entire life. I can like like I'm not I'm not I'm barely thinking at all here. <laughs> And like that when I play my buddies, the same thing. Like it's a game you play when you go to your friend's house. When I'm back home, and we just yeah, like have a couple of beers or Pepsi Max and and play some FIFA and you know play like four or five games, and nobody remembers who won anything. You're just kind of shoot. Or like sometimes you really do care, and then you, you know everyone goes quiet, and you're just kind of playing. So I like yeah. It's for me on the flights. It's just like a very easy like okay, I'm in the zone kind of thing. All right, here we go. No. 19 minute. 19 minute. <laughs> What happened there? Good tackle. <laughs> chip him, chip him, chip him, chip him. Nope, oh, not so going to happen. That's a shame. Soggy chip. Soggy chip. <laughs> Call me a soggy <laughs> chip. How dare you, sir? Love it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, having a kid is great. It's uh, I'm looking forward to like playing games with her when she's older. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all my brother does. Or she seems to enjoy it. She likes Minecraft and that sort of stuff that's on the Switch. Cool. And, yeah, they play a lot of games together and gets her in VR a little too early. But oh, that's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. We got my uh, my wife's uh, uh, grandmother who sadly uh, passed away a year and a half ago, but we had her in a, it was basically the last good night she had uh, at our house. We had a house party and uh, we put her in VR. I put her in like an office chair and stuck the VR on her. She was 96 <laughs> and uh, put her in like one of those ones you don't have to do anything or it's just like a fishbowl kind of thing. You're yeah. looking around and she thought it was amazing. She was like, this is great. What do you want to do? Canadian, oh, right? New York. Is there Canadian teams? You could, you could, if you go international, we could do Canada versus Ireland. Sure. If you wanted. Okay, I got you. Perfect. Canada. So lame. Beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. What a boring logo. VR is fun. My mom was the most disinterested person. She sat there, like, crossed her leg and she's like, nah. I was like, what are you talking about? I just, like, lost my mind. That was my first time in VR and then right. she went right after me and I was just losing my mind. Like, oh my god, this is so amazing. And she's like, What was it? Nah. It was just like the movie theater just sitting there. My brother had a Gear VR oh, cool. first and yeah, it was just the movie theater and he put a video on. But just like, seeing the seats all around you and put you on the moon and like, that's really cool. Uh, yeah. She wasn't into it? No, like, did not nonsense. care. <laughs> it's most nonsense. Not. I can go to a real movie theater. What is this? Pretty much. Um, it's having a kid changed, obviously it changes your priorities. It realigns things is what I've heard. Yeah, I think it can like, I, yeah, I think it, it can have a like obviously really big changes on, on, on people's lives in loads of different ways. Like just the anxiety of, of being, you know, responsible for this, this thing. And also like just the sort of general love and affection you have for this little, this little person. I think it, uh, it's going to sound ridiculous. I think 
I needed something to take up some of my time. Mm. I think I fill a lot of my time with, I'm like a pretty kind of OCD. I mean, I used to suffer from it pretty badly. I, I, I don't anymore, but I think I'm, I'm quite a compulsive person generally. Mm-hmm. Um, so work is just like a, I do work to like feel good. to so like, it's an anxiety response, I think in a lot of ways. And I think simply like just not having the time to do it all day, like 90 hour work weeks, just like being responsible for helping out my wife and, and, and hanging out and wanting to like hang out with, with my kid and my wife and all that sort of stuff. Not that I didn't want to hang out with my wife before or anything, but I think uh, especially when I started working for myself and then you sort of, you can very easily equate work to like doing good for the family. You know, you can create the reality in which, oh, I'm working an 80 hour week because I'm trying to provide for my family. And I think yeah. that could be a very um, seductive lie to tell yourself. So I think just the reality is when you have a child, it takes up quite a lot of time and headspace as well. Yeah. And, and I think for us, uh, it was kind of like what we needed to, to, to give us something to sort of center ourselves. And then, I don't know, when you've got less time, you're more selective with it. And it helps you make better decisions about, you know, what you're doing with your spare time or mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. So I think in that way, it's it's like pragmatically, it's it's definitely been a benefit. And then also like you just make this person who you're just super jazzed to be around and you love them to bits and like that's lovely and Mm. um, yeah like that that part of it i think is pretty relatively universal i think yeah it's great i miss it a bit it's like being here is like it's that same muscle feels good because it's good for the family and helps us out but also i get on get to say good night to her and i like saying good night to my baby just like i like to my dad and my mom say good night to me so yeah yeah it's kind of a it's been fun, but it's not nearly as I think. I think I had it in my head that like when you have a kid, you like it's very destructive on the life that you've built. Like you yeah. don't feel young anymore, or you you feel like you don't have time for your hobbies. And I think I'm in a like pretty privileged situation where I get to work from home. My wife is a a, a stay at home mom, so like we're 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 very fortunate in that respect. Mm-hmm. But I will say that also in our current situation, I I actually I actually feel younger than I did. <laughs> Like, weirdly, I don't know what happened. I feel like I'm better with my time and I have more free time to do stuff that matters to me. I can't, like, you know, World of Warcraft Classic set at the moment. I can't exactly, like, you know, go raiding 20 hours a week. But, like, I also don't necessarily want to. So I've loved it. It's been very freeing. It's been, it, I don't know, helps prioritize. Maybe that's yeah. the easiest way of putting it. You feel younger because you're finally living. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like, you know, put it on a T-shirt or whatever. But, like, yeah, for sure. It's a... Uh, uh, but I, I, it also, man, it makes you empathize with like single moms and, and, yeah, and no. people who are in like, uh, you know, tough financial uh, situations. Like, yeah, I can't imagine how difficult that must be and how like stressful it must be to have all your anxieties about that and then also have a child in the mix as well. So, yeah, it makes you feel Kendra Chickens as well. And I don't know. All that stuff makes me work my ass off as well because I, I, you know, you just have that kind of, I don't want to necessarily call it guilt because that's a negative thing, but just like, I don't know, I feel like I have a lot of wind beneath my wings and I, I need to make good on all the people who are sort of blowing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's like you have an understanding of the world and you need to do your part to kind of earn your keep sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. There. Speaking of lovely, this was a lovely conversation. Thank Danny. you. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Thank you this so, so much. Uh, I'm really sorry. I was a very bad FIFA friend. No, I, um, you're fine. I'm defending as best as I can. <laughs> I mean, Canada and Ireland's a pretty, uh, pretty, uh, I don't know, maybe we're on a level playing field. I can't really tell. I'm not, I'm not super down on the Canadian football players. Oh, you don't know of M. Borjan? <laughs> Probably Borjan. Michael Borjan. It's like Jordan, but it's like, and the, in the that's what that's what Pro Evolution used to have to do is like they couldn't have the yes, real names. Right. Yeah, so they have to like put like fake names. You'd have like Davis. like Wayne Rooney would be like Blaine Cooney or or like Eric Cantona. Yeah, that, maybe that wasn't the best example. Um, they did, they have like fake names, but every once in a while they'd have like a like they'd have one player who they bought or yes. like or like one team. They'd have like Chelsea would be in it for because they had the rights to Chelsea or like. You know, Serie A would be in it because they had the, the rights to the Italian league. Um, so that's why it was really popular. It was also way more popular in Europe for that reason because they had La Liga and they had um, the Italian division and Wild. the Erdivisie and stuff like that. Uh, well, thank you for being on the show. Do you have anything to promote? Anything in particular you're working on all the time, yeah, constantly? <laughs> yeah, our Patreon over at Noclip, our Patreon.com slash Noclip. Mostly just go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Noclip video. We've got three years worth of video game documentaries all free to watch no ads on them I was gonna be, about to say that sounds like a lot of ads you have to watch I know right no, no, no. but wait a second <laughs> that's pretty much it 
That's awesome. the personal history of games. Oh, I forgot to ask Kate this. All right, so the personal history of games. P H O G. What's a better name? What's a better shortening of it? P hog or fog? Oh, they're both strong. <laughs> oh, I was immediately thinking P hog, but fog <laughs> is good. But fog is like, a, is that an acronym or an italicism? If you do P hog, actually, it's neither. Do you know the difference between two of those? No. I, I only re- recently an learned about this. And it's an acronym is when you say the word, and italicism is when you say the letters. Oh. So LAX is an italicism. Yes. Or what would be an acronym that would be like NATO? Yes. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, um, I, I don't know think I don't think P Hog is either. <laughs> P Hog is kind of both. Yes, it's blending. Maybe we should say P Hog for here because the uh, Portland Independent Game crew or society is oh squad is pig squad p-i-g-s pig squad they call themselves mm-hmm. so maybe p-hog should be that while right, you're here well, at least that's one for p-hog <laughs> uh thank you again danny my pleasure and uh have fun picks thank you you too you can hear more of the personal history of games on spotify apple podcasts google play or wherever else you listen to podcasts If you enjoyed this episode and want to help us out, please leave us a rating and review. For updates, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at PHOGpod, or check out our website at personalhog.com. The show is hosted and produced by Eric Canius, executive produced by Robin Lands. Do We Like is brought to you by Beamed Media, a Canadian podcast network.